it today too. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, I got up early enough to be here on time and it's day two. So that's two days in a row. It might that's be a good. Thing. We're doing good. We're doing do really good. Shrimp. I do have the shrimp though. It's Eat early. Shrimp. Here. I've been, I was saying I got up and exercise. So I just have my normal level of shrimp just right up here, but the ones down here are gone. So, so good morning, Ann Frost from I Thought He Knew How. Good morning. How are you doing out there in the West? It is windy. It's is crap. It? Oh my word. Oh. Yeah, it's semi blow over kind of a day because it's blowing 60 plus. The gusts yeah. are yeah. I didn't look at the temperature for today. It is overcast, but we're definitely getting like some breakthrough sun. So I'm gonna try and get outside and you know, get a little bit of it. Yeah. You know, it's oddly Darker. warm. It's oddly warm to the low tonight. It's supposed to be like 51. That's oh, the that low. is weird. Like, that is well, weird for it's, you. Yeah, it's the wind and all that. I want to talk about what you're wearing because that's amazing. Thank you. This is um, a modified version of Stephen West's Fantastic. Fantastic. I always, fantastic, I had, fantastic. he says it Fantastic. I did not realize this. I was thinking it was Fantastic, like fantasy. <laughs> like he says it and you're all fantastic as in fantastic well that makes sense so that so yeah so and you have to do the when you say I, it this is me talking with my hands as i often do yeah but that's something steven would do yeah <laughs> I, so he's brilliant was, uh i knit yeah. this with shetland wool um, u.s raised shetland breed wool yeah uh from a brand called elemental effects and it comes in little hanks. I got it on the Great Northern Yarn Hall uh, a couple of years ago now in one of the yarn shops there. But I saw it in a lot of the yarn shops up there in northern New England. So this part here was supposed, this like sort of gray blue part was supposed to carry on for like three more repeats. But I ran out of this gray. So I just started waiting. I knew I was going to be a little bit short on this project mm -hmm. so this green is actually um jameson and smith shetland wall and i did oh, like i put a stripe of it up here and yeah, tied it together sure, so I, sure. I knew i was gonna be short so i i tried to tie it to tie it together that's totally a boss knitter thing to do awesome boss knitter yeah so yeah i i was Beautiful. i was saying before if i if i'm gonna be around knitters this is what i wear because it's lovely. i love your colors yeah now so, i want to look at yeah, it was, this was a really fun knit, like a lot of his, his sort of uh, jumbly shawls, you know, you, you're, you're in a stitch pattern for a while. And when you start to kind of be like, all right, I've had enough of this, it's time to move into another stitch pattern. That's and nice. I think he just picks really fun ones to play He's off. He's amazing. Other. He's yeah. seriously brilliant. Yeah. He has a lot of fun with his knitting and then we get to have fun with it. So works well. Absolutely. So yeah, you were talking about how you ran out of yarn. So let's talk yeah. about your chicken. <laughs> okay. I lost yarn chicken yesterday. So I'm uh -huh. doing another one of his patterns, uh, unicorn par parallelograms for my uh, advent calendar. So my advent calendar, I'll, obviously I'm going to have 25 Hanks. His pattern calls for 20. And I thought yesterday I said that the Hanks are... A, that I'm getting are a little shorter than what he used. They're actually a little longer. They're 10 yards longer. Oh, so I did the math, but I did, I did the math wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry. So this is my, this is my first one knit up from yesterday. That, that's and you so can pretty. see on my last row about here is where I ran out. But I, I showed like those sort of leftover from other projects. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah fiber seed and so I had the blue so I grabbed the blue and just finished that thing now what I'm going to do today because the cast on round the cast on row takes just a little bit more yarn mm -hmm. than a normal row so I'm going to go ahead and not change anything do today's yarn and find out how sh short I end up and so then if stay I stay tuned on up, that <laughs> yeah so I I'm pretty sure I'm going to come up short again but then I'll be able to say okay, you know, I need another 20 stitches to make it to the end. There's 24 rows. So if I just decrease one stitch per row, I should be fine going forward. And I figure yeah. a decrease of one stitch isn't going to be noticeable. So 
we'll see how everything turns out. So, but that's yesterday's. It's so pretty. I was so that's happy nice. with it as I was working it up. So, so people will have to come back tomorrow to see what happens with that. Yeah. This is going to be at least a three day saga trying to figure out how to <laughs> not <laughs> run out of yarn. <laughs> because I didn't I I don't want to have stuff left over from this project but I also want to finish the section you wanted to just work out right (laughs) right right so I'll be playing with it we'll see how it goes so you know how we put down in the video description what you're wearing and like the pattern so I feel like just because it's eight o'clock in the morning and I've just come off of farm chores and I'm still drinking coffee and I haven't had breakfast yet I'm like every day it's gonna say Anne is wearing some fantastic knitted blah blah Jen is wearing a hoodie. <laughs> it's gonna be like every day. Jen is wearing a hoodie. <laughs> I'll just skip that part. <laughs> and this is what happens to be a Wyoming cowboy hoodie. Woohoo! Nice. From, Very nice. Yeah. From the university. So we had okay. to pause the recording because we didn't turn their lights on. So poof, now we're in celebratory mode. We're good. Oh, I just noticed I didn't light my candle either, but that's okay. No candle today. <laughs> <laughs> but now we're ready to open packages. Yes. So I'm going to go with my next fiber seed color because yeah. you're just talking about fiber seed. Yeah, I want to see. Ooh, and you have the less crinkly. Oh. Yeah, this one, the next one's crinklier. Look at that. Oh, wow. Oranges and greens and like a, like sort of a taupey color where they meet. Yeah, and you've got some neat speckles in there. Yeah, speckles. I just love, I don't know why I love speckles so much. I didn't used to, like. So that's going to go on top of that. Yeah, that's going to tie in pretty well. That'll be interesting. Nice. Okay. Well, that'll be so fun. That's my see. first one. Okay, that'll be fun to see. All right, so I'm going to open day two from Lauren. Nice. Well, I have a scrap stuck to it. There we go. Day two from Lauren. And I'll try to open it down here, like under the desk, so it's not so crinkly. I find that kind of offensive to my... Yeah, that must have been fun for you to edit yesterday when I'm, like, opening my thing, like, right here. Oh, well, don't do it again. (laughs) Thanks. Oh, I'm going to love it. Day two. Let me put it next to day Oh, so that's, are we forming a fade? I think we're forming a fade. Yes. I love that so much. This is day one. This is day two. That's really pretty. Oh, see, and gosh, Lauren, thank you so much for doing a fade. I love a fade so much. <laughs> oh, I do. I do. I'm so excited about that. Okay. So day one, day one, day two. Nice. I need to, maybe I'll just, I know what I'll do. I'll start an Instagram highlight story thing. You know what I mean? I'm not going to do Instagram. Put up. Yeah. But I'm going to yeah. just do one, two, three as it builds. You know what I mean? That's a good idea. Yeah. I like that idea. I'm going to okay. do that. I'm going to do my British wool explorers and I'll do it away from the microphone. That's much better. Thank you. And we can see who we got today. I don't, did I not get an explorer? I don't think I got an explorer this day. Okay. So this is Balwin DK, also hand spun by Late Night Knits. I have never heard of Balwin sheep. So let me read the little, huh? The little scratchy. Okay. A scratchy. Rustic, right. we call that rustic. Rustic, strong. This is a strong wall. It has tooth. Tooth. <laughs> All right, Bawin, hand spun by Late Night Knits, sourced from Witchwood Spinner. This, oh, it's a Black Welsh Mountain. I like Black Welsh Mountain. This Black Welsh Mountain sheep has a white blaze on its face, hence the name Balwin, which means white blaze. In? Probably Welsh. Okay. It is a it is a it is a scratchier wool, a toothier wool. Yeah. Uh, but Black Welsh Mountain are they're a stronger wool. Right. But so I have I have more... some more Black Welsh Mountain over in my stash. So maybe it's more for like outerwear. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like blankets and yeah. outerwear and. And I think those are five grams each. We thought ten, but I think they're five. Are they five? Okay. And she know. said, I did get an, a message from her today saying she emailed me a pattern for them, but it hasn't come through. So I'm gonna have to follow up on that. And right. See. And maybe like there was a hat pattern. Oh, there's a little penguin today. Oh, nice. So there's the two of them together. This is yesterday's. This is today's. Oh, that's cool. 
I love a good hand spun. Yeah. I'm not very yeah. good at spinning, but I like hand spun yarn. I like when my mom gives me her hand. I was going to say, that's what you have your mom for. Yes. She's so much better. Okay. Okay. So let's see your other one. Day two. Day two. Yosemite, Yosemite in winter. winter. This one is from So Happy Jane, S E W Happy Jane. That's Heather Best at so happyjane.com. We'll put the link down below. Okay. So I'm I'm minimizing the crinkle. <laughs> oh, oh, that's fantastic. I love her. Look at Ooh. that. Oh, I like there's like rosy bits. Yeah, this is the speckle. Nice. So what if the what's going to be so interesting about these is the three dyers in a row have done, you know, like we talked about yesterday, three dyers in a row have done the same national park mm -hmm. from the same inspiration photo. Mm -hmm. So there's it's just going to be interesting how, but they didn't, from what I understand, they didn't really talk to each other about like specific colors because it was their own interpretation of that photo okay. but look how amazing yeah that works really well yeah it does look at that so it looks like your tonal and your speckled or your sorry variegated. your variegated speckled. and your speckled so tomorrow must be the tonal yes so again gonna I'm gonna, i'll put these on my instagram stories and as they go so you can see yeah Oh, and apparently this one from yesterday, I forgot to read this. This colorway is called Sunset Over Merced. Oh, and that was day one. And this one is called Yosemite. Yeah. There you go. That's beautiful. That is lovely. Oh my gosh. Well done, Heather. Yeah. And I think it got mentioned in the interview yesterday that they're going to be releasing the the three day clusters as you know options that you can just buy those three full, full size skeins yeah, yeah full size skeins so watch for that i think it's genius that's smart Three, totally brilliant yeah, yeah. absolutely so now i'm just who what are we going to make what are we going to make <laughs> yeah so who who are we interviewing you said so happy jane so happy jane we have a pre-recorded interview that will pop awesome. in as soon as we're done chatting and okay that was delightful. I've I had her on the podcast before and she's, oh. yeah. So I'll link those previous podcasts down below as well. Perfect. All right. See okay. you tomorrow. See everybody tomorrow. Bye guys. Heather, welcome back to the channel. Yay. Hey, thanks for having me. You're welcome. We've had you on a couple of times before and I'll link our previous podcast down below if people want to hear the long version. But you are part of this National Parks um, countdown calendar that I'm opening, and it's fantastic, and, and I have just opened yours today. So we, we're just excited. We've been interviewing people that were collaborating with that project, and we're happy to have you. Great. Thanks so much for having me. I'm, I'm happy to be back again. I'm so distracted by all the loveliness behind you. <laughs> oh, it's such oh. a gorgeous color wall and all i'm gonna ask you i'll ask you about specific ones later after ann okay. leaves because if she sees it all she'll want to she'll be like click click buying it as we, <laughs> as we speak it's dangerous so we wanted to start heather by asking you how you got into hand dyeing so the first um the first time i ever started dyeing yarn was probably like back in 2015 and i had a sewing business before that but I was actually a full-time teacher for 19 years up until March of 2020 when the pandemic hit. And um, I realized I was going to be teaching piano and voice on Zoom and I didn't want to do it. So I made a big pivot and decided to just let um, the, the dying business take over. So I was teaching and um, I was sewing, which is where the name So Happy Jane came from, because I had a sewing business. In fact, just this morning, I was looking on Etsy at like the stuff I used to sew around this time of year. And I was like, oh, man, do I miss sewing yet? I don't think so. Not so much. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, but I, I lived on a really tight teacher budget. And I was like, I want some pretty yarn, so I'm going to learn how to dye it. And um, so I did. I went to my little local um, arts and crafts store and I started 
um, buying the teeny tiny pots of jacquard dyes mm -hmm. and um, super terrified, like thinking there's this big mystery that I need to solve and how do I do it and how do I start? And I got like three different books. And finally, the lady who owned the shop was like, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> Just put yarn in the pot and put color in there and see what happens. That's the way you're going to learn is by just tr yeah. starting. Yeah. And so I did. And um, then shortly after that, a friend of mine offered a dyeing class. And I really loved the work that she was doing. So I was extremely excited to do it. I didn't know how I was going to fit it in because I had at that time like 36 private students and like four Montessori classes that I was teaching in a homeschool class. And it was like, um, crazy, completely, completely overwhelmed, you know, already with what was going on, but I wanted to learn so badly. And it was, she was like the classes now mm -hmm. and you're a teacher and I'd really love your feedback. I'd love to know if what I'm teaching is going to work. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. so I jumped in, I, I'm in my studio right now. I, my studio is based in a, a house that was built in 1904 that we used to live in. And so I had a teaching studio in the front room and I had my kitchen all set up as a dye studio. And I just started learning. And every time I would have a break from teaching, I'd sneak in the kitchen and try and dye some yarn and see, you know, what I could, what I could dream up. Um, and before I knew it, I had a couple wholesale accounts and I opened my website and, um, the rest, as they say, is history. This is year. This is my fifth year in business. So um, March awesome. of 2022 will be five years, and I will be at Stitches West for that. So if you're coming to Stitches West, come see me for my big fifth birthday. <laughs> cool. So tell me where it's being held this year, Stitches West? In Sacramento. Okay. Okay. As we all know, there's a ton of people out there doing this but I feel like your sense of I've told you this before and I'm just departing from the script a little bit I feel like your sense of color is a little different like you have collections that I would never have put together but it works but like I would have never thought to put this variegated with this solid but when you do it it seems to work out so <laughs> what I mean that's what I think makes your shop unique what do you think makes your shop unique well, I do think that I have a really um, specific color palette. And so if you like my work, you really like my work. And if you don't, then you don't. And I think you can tell that pretty quickly by, you know, by looking at my stuff, if it's, if it's interesting or not. Yeah. But when I first started dyeing, when I first started experimenting with hand dyed yarn, I got a couple of yarns from like, you know, the big fancy dyers, the big mm -hmm. fancy names that everybody was coveting at that time. And I was super disappointed because I was trying to knit this shawl and there was all this weird zigzaggy pooling. And I'm really a classic, like classic lines, tailored lines. Like I really like, um, I just, I, I don't really like pooling in yarn. <laughs> I don't like zigzaggy patterns and lots of like super bright neon-y colors. And I want to know that when I open up a skein of yarn and start to knit with it, that it's going to do what I think it's going to do. Um, and part of that, it means that I needed to learn how to read skeins a little better, but also I needed to know how I could find dyers who were dyeing the kind of yarn that I wanted to knit with. And there weren't that many. Oh. so. Uh, the person that I learned from knew how to make, how to dye variegated and speckled yarns in a way that they don't pool and flash. So I'll show you an example. Well, so this is my agate beach colorway in the skein. This is what it looks like in the skein of yarn. And when you knit it up, the color is evenly Ooh. distributed yeah. all throughout the project. Right. So right. instead of having like big chunks or zigzags or pools, yeah. it's like yeah, I'm not a fan of pooling either. I know some yeah. people think it's cool. And then there's some people that do it intentionally, like they do intentional yes. pooling. Right. It's just not my thing. And that's okay. I mean, yeah, it's totally right. fine. Like yeah. everybody has their thing. Yeah. Um, so when I, when I'm dying though, I want you to see color through, I want, and of course it's not a perfect science. I'm a human being, not a robot. So it's not going to be a hundred percent that nobody could ever come up with a stitch pattern 
or, you know, a gauge that wouldn't make my yarn pool. I can't promise that, but I can say that I very intentionally start with the end in mind, meaning I want your project to look the way you thought it was going to look when you started. Um, Because, and I think I learned, you know, I learned to think that way in my teacher training, because that's how you teach. Um, When I'm teaching someone, I'm always thinking about what is the outcome that we're looking for. So when I'm dyeing yarn, I do the same thing. And I think that that comes from my teaching background. Do you have any colorways that are your favorite? Like you are just so happy when it's time to dye more of that colorway? (laughs) Um. You know, well, agate peach is definitely one of the colors that I dye over and over and over and over again. I I have to admit that in year five, I'm getting to the point where I don't really love repetition so much anymore. And I get, I'm getting a little bored with um, doing the same things over and over again. So that's why I've been coming up with collections like the Beachcomber collection where, mm-hmm. you know, I dream up those colorways and I dream up the story that goes with them. And there's there's like a specific intent behind that collection when I'm dying it, but I don't necessarily have an outcome in mind. Like I don't know for sure what the colorways will be until after I'm done. So I get to play a little bit and that gives me life. Like not yeah. being held to a get being held to a recipe is truly what I look forward to. Yeah, it's, I would think tricky. it's kind of liberating, creatively liberating. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. It's I mean, it's hard because people see things and then they want it. And so I feel like I need to have kind of a balance between those two things of repetition and also the ability to dream and play and create, yeah. which is, you know, one of the things that um, I kind of got burned out with in music because I knew all the rules and everything was very formulated and I was supposed to do it this way and like this is the proper way to sing and play the piano and the proper technique and when I came to dying none of those rules I didn't know the rules so I just got to live I got to just go to the pots with my imagination and see what happened Um, so if I had my way (laughs) I would get to create and dream up things and not worry so much about the outcome. But I also, you know, keeping in mind that I want, that I have specific techniques that I use Mm -hmm. for results, just meaning like today, I feel like dying this mood Uh or telling this story or whatever, but Mm -hmm. I haven't figured out a way to run the business entirely that way. So (laughs) you will, I think you will. I totally do. Maybe we'll see. (laughs) Can you tell us about um, the yarn that you use that you dye onto? Um, so that is one of the cool things that I started this year. Um, I have, uh, I started, I introduced this. Most of what I dye comes from South America. And a lot of it is, you know, superwash merino base yarns that you're used to seeing from lots and lots of indie dyers. And with sustainability in mind and also um, just a, a real desire to find yarn that is rich in its own story. I started collaborating with a mill that is back East that, um, does bases that are from the U S entirely and not treated with super washing. Um, so they, they are, there's something about this yarn that when you hold it, it it has a story that that you can that I know this sounds this is going to sound a little weird, but you can feel the story in this yarn. And when you knit with it, it feels different and it's a lot more expensive. It's definitely not um, it's definitely not the cheapest way for me to produce yarn but there's something really special about it. So I've, I just um, released a couple, a collection on DK um, and it's called the sustain line. And I'll tell you the story that my teaching studio was called sustain music studio. Oh yeah. And I named, I, I named it that because I wanted my studio to be a place where my students could come and do something that made them feel alive and made them um 
you know, sustained them emotionally and Mm -hmm. mentally. And I feel like music can do that. And so when I got ready to name this domestic line of yarn, I decided I was going to name it sustain because I wanted that feeling to carry over into this yarn. So it's a really special project. I don't know how often I can have it because like I said, it's, it's a, it's a, a, an investment Mm -hmm. and it's a higher price point to sell. And I know that not everybody has it in their budget to, to be able to afford it, but it's, it's really special. And I have some more coming in the spring on sport weight. So I'm very excited about that. But Mm -hmm. so that's one of the things. And then, you know, I, I get all of what you see behind me is sourced in Uruguay. Mm -hmm. Uh, Excuse me, not Uruguay. It's Peru. Um, South America, most it mostly, and I've seen videos and pictures of the mills where people are working making the yarn. So I know that they're treated fairly, and I know that the animals are raised humanely. And so I pay a little bit more to make sure that um, that I can feel good about that too. Mm-hmm. So that's that's my basis. <laughs> you kind of have touched on what's maybe coming up for. Your business, you know, you said you're going to be in stitches in March and then your new sustain line that's coming up in the new year. Do you have other things that you want to tell us about that are coming up, you know, for New Year's or just round upon what your plans are for 2022? (laughs) Um, Well, definitely more collections like the Beachcomber collection that I did. Definitely more storytelling and things like that. The sustain line that I talked about. I released my first pattern last week. Show you. Oh, I love it. It's called the Sunday morning cowl. (laughs) And I called it that because this colorway is called Sunday morning, which is my favorite day of the week. And this was part of my cozy collection, which was my, uh, my advent for last year. So this is one of the colors that came in. And um, so I released the cowl and I'm working on the hat. So I think maybe a little bit of designing patterns to go with the collections that would be awesome if I if I can do it I don't know if I'll be good enough at it yet to to make that happen but then the other thing that I did recently was I taught a Kool-Aid dyeing class I'll show you so I don't know where this is gonna go I haven't quite I haven't quite fully formed what I want this to be yet but I'd like to start teaching some zoom dyeing classes and we're gonna start we're going to start with Kool-Aid because Kool-Aid is um, easily accessible and you can dye with the pots and pans you have in your kitchen without um, having to invest in a bunch of equipment. Right. So I was thinking, so some of the colors that I developed with Kool-Aid oh, oh, turned out wow. like they're really pretty. Wow. You wouldn't expect that this is going to be Kool-Aid, right? Like it's really, it's really pretty. Hmm. And this, and then we learned how to speckle. So this is all Kool-Aid colors and this super fun That's one. Amazing. Wow. So um, so I put together a Kool-Aid dyeing class and I would like to do that again. I did that for the Olive Knits um, yeah. Knit Camp at the Coast Retreat in September. I taught the class during the retreat. And um, so I'm thinking in 2022, I'll launch a couple. They'll be hosted on Zoom. So people can take them from anywhere and do them in their very own kitchen. Um, And I don't know exact, I I haven't finished formulating how that's going to fully look yet, but if you're signed up for my newsletter, then you'll for sure be able to find out more information about that. Oh yeah. And definitely you got to sign up for Heather's newsletter because like when she does special things, it's the newsletter people that know about it first. Right. Just saying. (laughs) And Jan is on the newsletter, so she knows first. Um, yeah, I, because I I'm do... waiting. I'm waiting for the Zoom Kool Aid class. Okay. Yeah. Well, but keep opening. I mean, the thing is, you also then have to open the newsletter. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> I do. I I know you do. I um I try really hard to make the newsletters, you know, not too frequent, but also often enough that people know what's going on. Yeah. And um. Yeah, my newsletter subscribers always are the ones who get the special special deals. And it's not because I don't love social media or, um, well, I actually, I don't love social media. 
(laughs) Who isn't sick and tired of social media? It's just that it's really hard to reach people. It's hard to know that you're actually getting your message to your audience. So so my newsletter is the way that I make sure that you can know what's happening. And usually when I do a collection like the Beachcomber collection or my kits that I did for Advent, they sell out. So if you're on the newsletter, then you have a better chance of being able to have some first dibs on stuff. Thank you so much for joining us. It's always delightful to have you on the channel. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Thank you.